Right, hello. I'm going to do a video on some palms that I've had for a few years in pots and they've now been put in the ground. And this may be controversial, maybe people saying I'm mad, especially due to the fact that a lot of people are saying they're only going to concentrate on cold hardy palms after the winter we've just had. But nevertheless, we're going to keep trying and you can only keep palms in a pot for so long before you know they don't really like it in pots they, they do want to push their roots out they do want a, a natural root space to to get full potential out of them and like I say full potential in the UK is not going to happen but they're still going to grow better in the ground than they will in pots and Again, some of these palms I'm going to protect over winter. And these have been palms that have been kept cold over winter. That they've been subject to long, dark, cold winters. They may not have necessarily seen a frost, but we're going to see how they go anyway. So again, I'm going to keep on trying. These are palms I've got. You know that there's a point where you think that I can no longer give them what they need in a pot so they're going to take the chances in the ground you know and you never know we, we, we might find that some might be harder than you think and some may not be but nevertheless let's have a look at what we got so this is the Kentia palm this has always been I've got three in pots which I bring out every year and that you know they can burn if you just bring them straight out you need to acclimatize them obviously but um, this one is in the ground I took it out of the pot got it in the ground and my plan with this one is just to put a sort of pop-up little greenhouse over it or fleece it or something like that on the coldest nights this is again a palm that's been kept in the summer house over winter they don't suffer at all they just you know sit dormant so this is going to be a good candidate to try in the ground and th these are hardy than you think I know they're sort of house plants in general and they they are slow growing but I do find that when they come out for summer they do tend to you know chuck out good two or three fronds and I think once they're in the ground that might be might be interesting to see. So it's a nice palm eight, sorry, pin eight palm. So we're gonna give that a go. I have brought the other Kentiers out and they're just in pots, sort of tucked at the back of the borders, just to give the illusion of a bit more tropical effect. So these, these are gonna get dapple shade in the sun and dapple shade in the morning sun, and they will be shaded in the afternoon and they don't need stupid hot temperatures they don't need a huge amount of light obviously why they, they, they make good house plants but they do do well with a bit of natural light and just natural conditions really so that's the first palm we're going to be trying in the ground the Kentia palm um, again with any of these palms let me know if you've uh, tried them in a, a cool climate UK or otherwise and uh, let me know if you've had success over winter in the in the ground but right so that's the first one second one I planted out a couple of months ago so quite early on in the season and this is the Livingstone Chinensis and yes we've got some damage this was kept in a polytunnel over winter and I believe if that's kept dry, we wouldn't see all this spot on. This is due to the humid, damp conditions in the polytunnel, where it constantly dripped on, and it did get down to minus two in the polytunnel. So I've kept this before cold and dark in the winter, and that's come out absolutely perfect. But it really is only the top foliage. When we get underneath some of the, the, the bottom, or bigger, newer fronds are looking pretty good. 
so once it starts to push out a new spoo I will cut these ones off so I, I know this is pretty hardy because I've had a, a lot smaller one in the ground for four years four winters going and it never died it does take a little bit of damage but um, when you get something this size I mean it's been in the pot for I've had it for like two years in a pot and that's done quite well but I think that's time to get it in the ground and give it a try so again this could just be fleeced on the coldest nights and uh, I'll leave it open most of the time so we'll see how that one goes as well like I say you may think I'm mad but I think it's going to be a, a pretty boring world if we all just had trekkie carpets in the garden no other palms I mean I do like the palms and I'm going to, always going to try a different variety so yeah that that is another one all right so leading on we've got another fairly a bright morning spot but shaded in the afternoon so we've got the Oranga angler eye which is the sugar palm um, again a degree of cold tolerance with this one allegedly goes down to minus six it will take damage um, again this has been kept the last two winters in the summer house I won't say it's heated it's just kept above freezing so it did actually get down to um, nearly zero this winter with how cold it was and there's, there's no foreseeable damage from that the, the damage we're seeing on that is the thing is when you do bring it out again that's one of these palms that really don't like to to come out in the in the bright sun and this has been acclimatized for a couple of weeks in the shade and it's been fairly overcast to be fair most days anyway but yeah there's, there's still going to get some brown tips. I mean, I'm not concerned about that. This, hopefully, now it's in the ground, it'll start pushing out and we'll get a couple of good new fronds on that, new leaves through, uh, through the summer. And uh, again, this is a nice little microclimate here. Um, I can tell that by the facts here next to it, where that received no damage, where a lot of my other facts is we sort of had dead brown and leaves where this one it was unfazed even with the winter we had due to the overhead canopy of the tree fern and again above that we've got multiple heads on the cord lines so that that is got some natural shelter there but again on the coldest nights I will probably you know wrap that up in fleece or whatever we'll, we'll take it you know play it by ear and see how it goes so there's three different palms. I know I've mentioned some of these before. I know I've done a video on a chinensis, but for anyone who sort of missed them or just a reminder really that, you know, some palms still are worth trying, in my opinion, depending on your climate, where you are. Um, yeah, so there, there's the three that side. And I did do a video when I done a new pond about the palms this side so I'm, I'm calling this one it's actually in shade at the minute it's fairly early in the morning but uh, come late morning all afternoon this is in full sun so this is what I'm calling the, the American palm bed and basically it's just a, a small island at the back of the pond and, and so it's going to get um, reflected heat from the the wooden fence behind I won't say reflect it but it's gonna give it a little bit more warmth and obviously the reflection of the water is, is gonna make it nice and bright as well so it's, it's a, gonna be a good microclimate and also water holds heat so in the winter that may just give it a, a degree or more I don't know but either way so let's go through the palms we've got in here so the centerpiece is the queen palm so I know this is sort of South America but this is the, the mountain form and there are accounts of these surviving for several years or growing well by all accounts in you know obviously London and places like that but we're going to give it a go we're on the we're on the Suffolk coast and we do get fairly mild winters so again it may be a case of just getting a some sort of uh, poly sheet and securing it to the fence and, and just on the angle 
across here for winter just to keep the worst of the frosts off but that's all I'm going to give it but yeah so that is Queen Palm mountain form and then to the left I know it's, they're very small at the moment but we've got the uh, needle palm uh, centre well we, we all know about the needle palm it's one of the hardiest palms in the world and uh, should survive this climate no problem our winters to the right of that we've got a sable miner which was out most of the winter and it took a little bit of brown spotting on some of the leaves but very hardy and sort of centre front very small again we've got the uh, saw palmetto so that's going to be a clumping along with the uh, needle palm clumping so the three little ones are sort of North American palm species which are all got a good degree of cold hardiness um, but not really the cold is going to be the issue with these it's just going to be our summers are not as hot as obviously we, they get in North America and they're going to be real slow but that's why I've put them in a small size the centrepiece is going to be the queen palm so hopefully we'll get some growth off that um, yeah so we're going to keep trying just uh, pushing the, the boundaries the stone pushing and we're going to keep experimenting and with the ever changing climates I know, like I say, you might think I'm mad with the, the winter we've just had, but you know, in general, we do get mild winters, and my theory is uh, lightning doesn't strike twice, so <laughs> we'll see. But um, here we go. So we've got a few palms in. I've got plenty more sort of smaller palms to try. I'm going to keep them potted up for the next year or two and then as and when we need to replace any palms that are struggling or died through winter damage whatever we will replace but like I say I, I, I like to buy small grow on for a couple of years in pots get them in the ground give them a try right let's leave it there and thanks for watching